Well, here with me now are the Times columnist David Aronovich, New Statesman columnist Miriam Francois Sarah, and the writer Nezreen Malik. Um, first of all, David Aronovich, you, Aronovich, your argument seems to be that the rest of the press is kind of venal and cowardly, and that is what has caused the kind of, as it were, the isolation of Charlie Hebdo. Yeah, I think we've been, <clears throat> I think we've been scared, and actually, uh, if you were to get any group of senior journalists in one room and they were talking openly, they would say that they have uh, dodged the issue of the representation of Mohammed uh, in the way that they would represent just about anybody else and any other thing, uh, partly because they don't want to give offence, which is one kind of a reason, but also in the end when it was justified because they were scared of the potential repercussions. And that's why we don't have um, the Book of Islam, we don't have Monty Python's Life of Ahmed, uh, we don't have Mehdi Hassan, the opera, we don't have any of those things because it's actually felt to be too dangerous for people to represent uh, a satire on Islam and Islam's prophet. This is one of the great world religions and should be more open for satire than most institutions on earth, etc. And we don't do it because we're scared. And that means that when somebody does do it, they become the target. They become the obvious people who have done this terrible taboo thing which shouldn't be taboo. Miriam. Yeah, I'd love to come back on that. I mean, before I come back to that point, I just want to talk about the report that we heard earlier because discussing this in terms of immigration is really problematic. I mean, both Said and his brother Sharif Kouachi are both French citizens. They may hark back to Algeria in terms of their origin, but they are French citizens. And discussing them ter in terms but of immigration suggests this an is, otherness I which understand. is not the I issue. I understand, and but this is not the, the to, argument we're at, at point just now. The to argument come back at point to what, just now yes, to come is back whether to, or not yeah. uh, the, the response of the British press in not showing the cartoon has made the British press somehow complicit and cowardly. Yeah, no, I, I heard what David said. I think, again, let's put this back into context. I mean, um, we're hearing that uh, in the case of Sharif Kouachi, he was radicalized back in 2005. That's even prior to the Danish cartoon. So I'm not sure that actually this entire discussion, although it's being framed about freedom of speech, is really the attack on freedom of speech that we're seeing it as. I think perhaps this is an opportunity that some extremists are using to try and polarize European societies. And by discussing this, discuss uh, this issue, in terms of freedom of speech, we're actually falling into the very trap that they're trying to set for us, which is to create these binaries, the West versus Islam, something we heard very much in David, uh, David's column, actually. But, it, but in your view, yeah. is satirizing Islam and the way that it is satirized by Charlie Hebdo acceptable or not? Well, my personal opinion yeah. is, is that it's fine, but I obviously believe that in the case of racist depictions, broader society should speak out about them. There was a front page uh, image uh, that Charlie Hebdo published a while back when the young girls, in fact, were kidnapped by Boko Haram, which featured very racially prejudiced images of these young girls in headscarves um, with the title, uh, Where Are Our Benefits? Basically depicting them as benefit scroungers in France. These are young girls who were taken as sexual slaves it, by an extremist it, group. These were children. This was a very racist depiction. And so when we have that sort of satire that demonizes individuals, absolutely, fine, let them say it, but let the rest of society denounce let, 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 let that, on the case of the Boko Haram, and I have to say I have not seen the Boko Haram one, one. I, I, are there any no-go areas for satire, or is that the very point of satire? Well, no, I mean, all people are making all kinds of decisions all the time about whether they want to print this, that or the other. But back in January, there was an issue here in Britain when a liberal, a Muslim Liberal Democrat candidate retweeted an image of Mohammed from a cartoon called Jesus and Mohammed. This image was utterly anodyne. It couldn't have been more anodyne. This programme had the discussion but didn't show the cartoon. The editor of this programme, who's a great guy, then said, went on Twitter to say it wasn't journalistically necessary, it wasn't to, to use this cartoon, and as a consequence, it, nobody knew well, what the cartoon was. Is there now, a danger of self-censorship? That's the problem. Is there a no, danger see, of self-censorship? I actually agree with David there that there is, I think we're conflating two different types of depictions, and I think we're conflating French satire with British satire, which are essentially very different things. Um, if I, I, actually, I actually think if for anodyne presentations of the Prophet, where it's actually relevant to a news peg, I would, I would have a very 
big problem as an editor not to run it because I think actually the, the reason not to run it would, would seem to be because of Sorry, fear. Rather, and rather, yet, they, did. on, and yet they didn't. Let me finish. Ra I'm actually agreeing with you here, so let's, let's, know, let, let's get somewhere. Didn't. The point I'm making is sometimes when the image is anodyne and inoffensive, I find it hard to, I would find it hard but to justify not running it. If it is an offensive image, whether it is against Muslims, black people, women, I think then we need to give editors some slack um, when they don't run those kinds of images. Charlie Hebdo's images, when it comes to the Prophet, Muslims in general, were so offensive and so racist that actually I would understand that an editor in the UK where we have a very different but we have, but, audience. But we, hang on, hang on. Yeah. Let's just talk about satire. I mean, satire in a way, I mean, goes back way beyond James Gilroy cartoons. I mean, satire is the lifeblood in a way of British society in many ways. Satire. No, absolutely. You know, and I wonder if, if you think that there are certain no-go areas because is, is, is it possible because of exactly what was being said, no depictions and so forth, is it possible that the way that Islam is treated in terms of satire has to be different from any other religion? I don't, I don't necessarily think so, no. I don't think there are no-go areas. Um, if, if you have a culture and an audience that actually is receptive of that, whether they're Muslims or not. And I think mm. actually it's been really interesting. Most British people are not familiar with Hebdo's images. And what they've seen over the past 24 hours or so has really shocked people no, here. No, 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 I must just I must just pull you up on this because we did actually show you did, more. You did I mean, yeah. No, you did eventually. You did eventually. But the point I was trying to get at Nazri is why it was that she thought that people were so reluctant even to show images that she would agree with Anodyne. Actually, the Charlie Hebdo images are just as bad of the Pope and so on as they often are of... Yes. Uh, but, but of can, I, can, I, can I ask you a question about that? Mm -hmm. um, in the same way that, you know, that satirising the Prophet uh, is regarded as unacceptable by many Muslims, is it unacceptable to satirise the Pope? Is it uh, uh, to satirise Jesus Christ, Moses, whoever? Stalin. Sta I mean... I mean the fact is, even if people are widely offended by these images, it can never ever justify running into an office and murdering a bunch of journalists. Let's be absolutely clear about this. The, the fact that some people are offended about it, then the issue for any editor surely should be what are the implications of this mm -hmm. in terms of the impact it's going to have on individual communities. I just want to finish this point. In the case of Charlie Hebdo, they have historically sacked a cartoonist who depicted an anti-Semitic cartoon featuring, in fact, the son of Nicolas Sarkozy. They have themselves self-censored when they consider that on certain issues Sorry. it is unacceptable to depict certain communities okay, but, but in you, prejudicial fashion. Yeah, but would you say that is e the actions of any sackings of anything is ever acceptable? No, there's no such thing as absolute free no. speech. Everybody there is censors no such thing in as absolute all, speech. No, 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 there's no such thing as eternal life, but you don't like it when I try to end yours. I mean, this notion, this we want as much it. free speech as we can possibly but get. So we... stop trying to limit everybody's free speech by saying there are limits to free speech. speech. <laughs> now, the question that I was raising... Well, let, 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 just before we, we've run out of time, and I want to come back to what Ian McEwen said. It was as, what has happened now has implications for free speech. Do you agree with that? I don't agree with that whatsoever. Yeah. I think, actually, that David has an axe to grind vis-a-vis -vis running profit images full stop in the UK, which is a valid argument that needs to be had separately and not piggybacked onto the Paris attacks, which I think it's are actually the very same, different. It's the same yeah. thing, Nazreen, and Sorry, it is the, exactly the same I don't, form of, I think, form of I don't internal self-censorship. There are serious I'm implications. They're on we, social cohesion. We will come back to this. I, I, you know, we should just be open-ended tonight and discuss this for the next half hour, but we can't.